Hi everyone, I'm Juliette Krupe, a teacher and learning specialist from New York City, here to tell you about the four instructional domains of mathematics. When working with students, I prefer to use the four instructional domains of mathematics as guidance in how I choose the tailorized instruction with digital and visual representations. The four domains were established by researchers Dr. Susan S. Goldman of the University of Illinois at Chicago and Dr. Ted S. Hasenbring of Vanderbilt University in 1997. Domain number one, conceptual understanding. A general rule of thumb is to use three manipulatives and three visuals before introducing the math equation. This way, the students will know how to apply the math equation to real life activities. For example, when addition is taught, students need to join concrete objects or visual representations together. Then they will, able, then they will be able to add abstract numbers like four plus seven. As a side note, this is not to be confused with the efforts teachers make to cultivate meaning at the start of a lesson. For example, teachers will often call to mind relatable experiences at the start of a session to draw students into the lesson. Number two, declarative knowledge or memorization. This includes automatic recall of numbers, counting, reading and writing fractions, telling time, and identifying symbols without hesitation. There was a study completed by the Center of Neuroscience and Education that tested the verbal and visual spatial working memories of students with dyscalculia, a language disorder, and students with math anxiety. When compared with students in a typically developing group, the students with dyscalculia performed worse in visual spatial working memory tasks. For example, a student with dyscalculia can struggle to imagine an object rotating 180 degrees around a fixed point. The group of students with math anxiety, on the other hand, had a more difficult time with verbal working memory. An example would be repeating the procedure for adding fractions with unlike denominators. When the student with math anxiety were given a higher working memory load, such as a larger number of objects to be memorized, they became impaired with the visual spatial task. Knowing whether a student has issues with verbal or visual working memories can help teachers with how they scaffold lessons and chunk math activities. If the activity requires mental manipulation of objects, I will often use color coding, texture, or digital representations to help the student. Desmos and Notability are two of my favorite apps for this. Number three, procedural knowledge. A student follows a series of steps to solve a problem. I notice the students who have visual spatial impairments can still excel at procedural knowledge because they compensate for it with their stronger verbal working memory. When a student of mine with dyscalculia, for example, takes an assessment, I will ask her to list out the steps for solving a problem before we begin. On the flip side, students with math anxiety can compensate for their verbal working memory with visual spatial working memory. If given a block of cubes or even sticky notes with numbers on it to solve math equations, they will show you the steps for solving them with a lot more fluidity than verbalizing it. I recommend that when giving an assessment, teachers offer students the option of drawing or manipulating a math problem instead of writing their work. Elementary school teachers are very good at doing this. High school teachers are too, but they often don't because of the restrictions with state assessments that require written work. Number four, problem solving. This is when students use concepts, factual knowledge, and procedural strategies in real world contexts. We often see domain four in word problems and in science which is why students need a solid foundation in the other three domains in order to feel confident in their problem solving skills. With these four domains in mind, our students will achieve success in math.